So by now, I hope you are at least tentatively convinced that at some point in the history of this planet, there was a massive hydraulic and tectonic event. That the surface of this earth was mashed up in dramatic ways beyond anything that we normally think about. And that this all took place in conjunction with massive flooding. We haven't talked yet about how that happened. We'll get there a little bit later. But I want to step back for a minute. I said at the beginning of this video that I believe that there is a creator and I believe that the Bible is a reasonably reliable historical account. Again, I'm not going to try and convince you that the whole book is inspired because actually I don't believe that either. But I am going to suggest for your consideration right now that the passage in Genesis which speaks of a global flood is a reliable historical account. And then I want to show you a few other pieces of evidence, chariot wheels on the floor of the Red Sea, just where Exodus says they will be found. The remains of a huge wooden ship which approximates the Genesis account of the ark that was built by a man called Noah. The remains of cities turned to ash by sulfur, flaming sulfur balls from the sky in the locations assigned to Sodom and Gomorrah and the other cities, also in Genesis. And I'm going to ask you to consider the possibility that at least at that level, the books of Genesis and Exodus are reasonably reliable historical accounts. So we've identified that there's been a massive hydraulic and tectonic event. The question is now how long ago did this take place? We've seen that each stage of what has been discussed happened rapidly. It's more likely to be weeks or months per stage rather than millions or billions of years. And then there's the added complexity. There are written records that suggest this happened as recently as 2345 before Christ. Other widely held opinions state that these events took place millions or billions of years ago. Which view is more reliable? We've looked at the exponential characteristics of erosive capacity, of the strength of rock, of all sorts of other physical attributes. And it's important to note that if we're talking about exponential characteristics, things might have happened in thousands of years, which a linear characteristic would say happened in millions of years. And then we find ourselves faced with the dilemma of what you might call the God's word phenomenon. People who say the Bible is the word of God and without error the Bible says there was a flood, I believe the Bible, so that settles that there was a flood. But nowhere in the book does the Bible claim to be without error or to be the word of God. It is a book containing a collection of historical records. And then we find a counter phenomenon which you might call, my teacher told me. Professor N told me there was no flood. This planet came into existence 4.55 billion years ago, plus or minus 1%. Everything happened gradually. There's nothing to discuss. But we have no way of knowing what happened millions of years ago. It's pure speculation. We must look at current practical facts. And then we find ourselves confronted with the problem of clean, sharp corners. All over the world, we find clean rocks with sharp corners. Over millions or billions of years, these corners would be weathered and rounded by thermal stressing and covered with moss and lichen. So millions of years is improbable. Are there other indicators of age? We've referred previously to the mathematical and legal principle of reductio ad absurdum, reduced to the absurd or proof by contradiction. And I'm going to make use of that in discussing a number of these theories. So let's look at the theory which says that this happened millions or billions of years ago. Well, fundamental to that theory is a statement that we know the radioactive decay rate of some mineral or other. 
and we have no basis to assume that there's been a non-linear trend. Everything so far in this presentation indicates massively non-linear events. We have written records going back thousands of years which indicate a recent event. So I want to suggest for your consideration that millions of years is therefore highly improbable, technically unsound and logically probably absurd. Then we have the phenomenon of, of the Bible is the word of God and without error, can we reduce that to the absurd? Well, we can certainly say it's a collection of writings by assorted people. Nowhere in the book is there a passage that unambiguously catalogues the content of the book and defines its scope. There are books of the same name that have different compilations and literally hundreds of different English versions. The Catholic version is not the same as the Protestant version, is not the same as the Greek Orthodox version, is not the same as the Church of the East version, and so it goes. Nowhere in the book does it claim that the entire compendium of writings is without error. And nowhere in the book does it claim that the entire compendium of writings is, quote, the word of God or Yah, the true name of the Creator. So the inerrant word of God or Yah is therefore highly improbable. But could Genesis be correct at some level? At this point I suggest that the most we can say about the book, the Bible, is that it is a collection of writings, the oldest of them generally accepted to be at least 2,500 years old. The book claims that there was a global flood in about 2345 BC, or more correctly, the section of the book called Genesis makes that claim, and there are various subsequent references to it. At this stage, let us not get into whether the flood was an act of a being who is customarily referred to as God or the Lord, or even whether he exists or not. Let us simply say that Genesis claims there was a global flood and examine that portion of that book further. See if we can reduce that to the observe. Genesis is presented as an historical account of real events. Can we validate this? If we find minor errors, they're not a problem if we consider the writings to be the work of human beings who, like ourselves, make mistakes. Most specifically, can we regard reports of a global flood about four and a half thousand years ago as reliable. Well, Genesis refers to a flood, it also refers to a massive wooden boat of a length of about 150 meters, width 25 meters and height 15 meters, which came to rest in the mountains of Ararat. Now it happens that the mountains of Ararat are in Turkey, and it also happens, as you can see from the photograph, that the remains of a ship of exactly those dimensions have been found in a mud flow on the mountains of Ararat in Turkey. And around that various archaeological finds, including a house and engravings which indicate that it was built by a family of eight people, entirely consistent with the Genesis account. Here we see a computer model of the ark based on the excavations and subsurface radar observations and we see a model constructed based on what has been found. We also find drogue stones and it's notable that Noah's house was found and that the house belonged to somebody about six meters tall. The grave was also found. So we can zoom in and find this ark, we can find it even in Google Earth, and we can position it exactly where Genesis says that it is to be found. So that seems to me to be pretty solid evidence that at least that part of Genesis has some substance in truth, even if it's not exact. We find also in Genesis genealogies, which date the flood 1658 years from the start of the genealogy. And then interestingly, we find Irish genealogies, which date from Noah, that correspond with the Genesis genealogies, at least in the first few generations. And it is reported that around the world, other genealogies confirm that they all stem from a man called Noah or Ne or similar. Careful examination of Egyptian timelines reveals that when we take account of the fact that different pharaohs lived concurrently and reigned concurrently in different parts of Egypt, that they agree with the date of the flood roughly 
two, three, four, five before Christ or before Common Era, depending on your choice of language there. And it's interesting to note that it's doubtful whether we have the technology to build the Great Pyramid today. So there are indications of very advanced technological capability immediately after this flood. So we have a large boat in the mountains of Ararat, as reported in Genesis, confirmed. We have the genealogies confirmed. And so I suggest for your consideration it is absurd to disregard Genesis as a source of historical information and therefore that we can say with some confidence that a recent flood is confirmed.